1941, the age of the battleship was drawing to a close. Three massive ships were about to engage in one of the massive sea battles of all time by HMS Hood, Bismarck and the Ark Royal. The German battleship Bismarck was huge. At over 50,000 tonnes, she was the world's largest weapon the oceans had ever seen. Bismarck was designed to wreak havoc with the North Atlantic shipping convoys, breaking the supply lines to Britain. Bismarck's first and only mission lasted just over a week under the command of Admiral Luchens. This is that story. The Bismarck was breaking out into the Atlantic and this was confirmed by several sightings. The Admiralty was trying to cover four major routes she could possibly take and resources were stretched to the full. On May the 23rd, HMS Suffolk and Norfolk spotted the Bismarck escorted by the heavy cruiser Prince Eugen in the Denmark Strait and brief fire was exchanged, but the British ships remained at a safe distance shadowing until other Allied ships got nearer. The two ships closing in were HMS Hood and the newly completed Prince of Wales which still had a hundred civilians working on board to finish her. HMS Hood was the pride of the British fleet and a machine that had represented Britain's status on the sea for two decades. At dawn on the 24th of May, Admiral Holland commanded Hood to attack Bismarck. Hood and Prince of Wales steamed in towards the German ships to get closer. Because the Hood had very weak upper deck armour, she would be prone to plunging shells. By getting the Hood in nearer, the side armour would offer more effective protection. The disadvantage was that only the forward facing guns could fire while she was closing in. At this stage the ships were about 10 miles apart. Both sides exchanged heavy fire and Hood was hit by Prince Eugen. Bismarck also suffered a hit from Prince of Wales and now suffered an oil leak from the forward fuel tanks and was losing some fuel. At 6am Hood started to manoeuvre to port to open up her rear guns when disaster struck. Bismarck's fifth salvo of shells found their target and plunged down at twice the speed of sound smashing through the weak upper decks and finding their way to the aft magazine, an explosive store. The fire then ignited the forward magazine and the most cataclysmic destruction of a battleship ever witnessed. Two hundred tons of explosives were ignited and took just three minutes to sink the ship. She sank so fast that only three sailors survived. One thousand four hundred and fifteen men perished. The remaining three ships looked on stunned at the total devastation. Prince of Wales took seven heavy hits too and had to retreat with only one gun turret still operational. It was an impressive display of superiority from the German ships, but celebrations were short-lived as within two hours Churchill gave the now famous order to sink the Bismarck and every available ship and aircraft began the hunt to restore the nation's pride. Bismarck was damaged and the Admiral ordered a zigzagging pattern to lose his British pursuers Suffolk and Norfolk. At the same time Prince Eugen detached and escaped leaving Bismarck on its own. The Admiralty launched a Catalina aircraft to find Bismarck, which it did. Several surface vessels from Force H were diverted from the Mediterranean by the Admiralty, and these included HMS Ark Royal, an aircraft carrier that was to play the pivotal role in the demise of the Bismarck. Ark Royal launched 15 swordfish aircraft. These canvas and string biplanes were affectionately known as string bags by their crews. They saw a massive ship and attacked it. At this point, they did not realise they were attacking their own ship, HMS Sheffield. Luckily, the new magnetic detonators on the torpedoes proved faulty and none of them worked. The air crews got a radio message, realised their mistake and broke off the embarrassing attack. Now, the string bags had time for one more final attack before the Bismarck could make for safe waters. 
It was literally all or nothing as the planes took off in 55 foot swells. This time they attacked Bismarck with the usual contact detonators fitted on the torpedoes. Flying low and slow so as to launch their lone torpedoes safely, the biplanes ventured as close as they dare with anti-aircraft fire exploding all around them. The timing to drop the torpedo was crucial. These small, slow, outdated little planes were up against the most powerful weapon on the sea. A daunting challenge that seemed destined to foul, but it didn't. Two of the torpedoes hit the propellers and rudder of Bismarck. Other torpedoes hit the side armour too, but it was the steering damage that now proved critical. Morale dropped on the German ship as the crew began to realise they could only travel in circles and at a reduced speed of less than 10 knots. They were now sitting duck and still out of range for U-boat and Luftwaffe protection. The situation was now hopeless as Bismarck was powerless to escape the British fleet that was relentlessly closing in. The morning of the 27th of May saw HMS Rogney and King George V firing on Bismarck. By now Bismarck was already listening to port and she could barely move. Cruisers Norfolk and Dorsetshire moved in and the British fleet pummeled the crippled German battleship with 3,000 shells of which nearly 400 found their mark. The upper decks were transformed into a raging fire. Rodney hit the control tower disabling Bismarck's ability to aim. Then the rangefinder was destroyed. After just 30 minutes, the guns on the Bismarck fell silent and she couldn't fight back. But she still wouldn't sink. The Bismarck's in a 13-inch armour kept her afloat, although she was slowly but surely submitting herself to the waves. The Dorsetshire fired torpedoes into the side of Bismarck. Now it was just a matter of time. Her end was inevitable and perhaps hastened when the Germans themselves gave up and ordered the ship to be scuttled and abandoned. Bismarck fell beneath the waves an hour and a half after the attack started. Revenge for the loss of Hood. 800 sailors were now in the sea of which 110 were picked up by British ships before the threat of U-boat attack meant they had to leave. By the time the U-boats came, nine hours later, only five further German men remained alive in the swells. 2,000 German sailors had lost their lives. The story of these amazing battleships is one of courage by their crews and immense loss, but also forecasts the end of massive battleships of the sea. Just a little while later, the aircraft carrier Ark Royal was herself sunk by a U-boat. All three ships had now gone. The lessons learned will hopefully never need to be repeated, but the memories of these people that served in them remains. This film is made for them. <laughs>